Hi. Uh, <laughs> how's everybody doing? Uh, so this is me. I've done a couple of these fun things that people talked about. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about sort of who I am, where I'm coming from, and why uh, you should listen to anything that I say. Um, so I started my technology career, as most folk do, at Crate and Barrel. Um, uh, spent better part of a decade there building uh, point-of-sale systems and a bunch of internal tools and intranet stuff, and it was super fun, and I learned a lot, and uh, it, was, it was a really great application of, of technology in sort of a non-technology world. Um, and then I got bored, and I left, and I went to Threadless, which is a super cool company in Chicago. Uh, we made t-shirts, and did that for a while. I worked on the, the, the whole commerce system, and we did, you know, we did a whole a warehouse management system, essentially, because um, we sold a lot of t-shirts, and we sent them out. Um, and then once I had sort of accomplished what I wanted to do there, I did the next logical thing, which is housewares, t-shirts, the president. Um, so uh, in 2012, I, I was the, uh, the director of engineering for the Obama campaign, and we built this amazing team of, of technologists to build technology and, and really support a bunch of like, millions plus of uh, volunteers and staff to help you know, make sure that everybody heard what, uh, everybody was heard so that the, the campaign could actually react to what people really wanted to know. And then uh, we won, and then I was fired. Uh, <laughs> so that's how that works, by the way. Um, and so myself and my, my co-founder started a small company called Modest um, in Chicago, where we were focusing on trying to make commerce better, uh, starting with mobile commerce, and uh, it was working really well. And then just recently, uh, we joined, the entire company joined uh, Braintree to keep doing that same thing. Uh, so, all right, through all that, the thing that I've, like, the, the one thing that I've learned and the thing that I, like, just sort of, it's part of who I am now is that technology essentially only matters to help people be more effective, to be able to do their job better, to be able to make things better, faster, whatever that is. Um, more context for what this is. I stole the title of this talk um, from one of my favorite books called Small is Beautiful, which is by E.F. Schumacher. It's, uh, he's a wonderful economist, and uh, he wrote this book called Small is Beautiful, Economics as if People Mattered, which is about uh, sort of a sustainable view on economics and, and figuring out how to do things in a way where we're not strip mining the entire world. Uh, it's a good read. Um, he's generally credited with coining the phrase appropriate technology, which... Cool, what does that mean? So the, the sort of archetypal example is like, take a developing country. They have a desperate need for agriculture, and so they need to build irrigation systems. And so from the technology perspective, we're like, awesome, totally have all that. Um, this is where the fact that I have kids starts to show through. Um, so we have these tools. We have these tools that like, that's literally the only thing that they're supposed to do is to like do these things. But they're kind of resource intensive. So, like, we have to, like, fly, fly in the fuel, and we need to, like, bring the excavator there. That's a, that's a whole big thing. And then we have to build this infrastructure to support the technology to solve this problem. Or we could use a shovel. Um, and so that's what the, the appropriate technology is. It's like we may have better tools to do the job, but in this case, the right tool is actually a shovel. This is where I catch my breath. All right, so a couple of quick stories. Um, I mentioned the Obama campaign. Uh, so when I started pulling this together, I was like, that was so long ago. Everything has changed. But luckily, the mistakes that I made are timeless. Um, so as far as I know, I was the first director of an engineering that a campaign ever had. Um, normally, campaigns are all about using technology that's already there, and we tried to sort of shift that to building technology. Uh, so we brought in engineers to build things, to be able to, to solve these big problems. Uh, we brought in experts. And we did what, uh, what I like to refer to as just throwing tech at problems. Um, and there were so many fun problems. So one of the big ones is canvassing. Uh, we have those million-plus volunteers. They go out and they knock on doors. Um, we need to be able to collect that data. People have to like, engage with, with those people. And then we need to take that and, and do good things with it. So the tool that they used for that is paper, um, which 
was shocking when we got there. And we talked to everybody, and we were like, we got to make this better. And all of the non-engineers were like, don't change anything. Just change where we send people, who we're sending, and speed up the processing of that data. And we were like, cool. However, <laughs> we can do that and so much more. So like, let's build this cool mobile app, and then, bam, real-time data, it's solved. Like, we can reroute people. We can give people the context that they need so that when they go to the door, they know exactly who they're talking to. And then the data processing is just built in. It's great. Everybody, it's wonderful. The future's solved. We win. Everything is wonderful. We're the greatest people in the world. Um, one caveat. I didn't know what I was talking about. Um, so while I was an expert in technology, and the quotes are there for good reason, uh, that doesn't mean that I'm an expert in being able to solve any problem. It doesn't mean that my team full of experts could just solve any problem. Throwing tech at the problem is not going to do it. What I needed to do was actually listen to what people needed. So here's a quick list of things that I ignored. So we're building things for volunteers. They are largely very old or young. Um, there's an incredible range of technical proficiency to people that could write their own app for canvassing, to people who are like, I think I got this flip phone thing down. Um, and taking into account the average total volunteer time, we have million plus volunteers, but how much time are they actually going to be spending? And how much time does it take for them to actually be effective? So if it's like, cool, we got like six hours of training, but we only get 10 hours of their time total, it's a huge waste. Um, training, by the way, super hard. Internet is sketchy. This was also four years ago. It's getting better. It'll constantly get better. But like, we're talking about the suburbs, rural areas. There's no guarantee that people are going to have any internet there. Um, we totally ignored what we could be building instead of building this tool that we thought was super cool. Um, basically, uh, I did a terrible job. <laughs> um, so, like, we, doing that would not actually solve the problem. Um, so, paper. Um, for, for the end user, for the, the volunteer, they can actually focus on talking to people instead of, like, trying to type something into a very small box. Um, we don't have to train people on how to use paper. So getting people up and running is very fast. Um, so I like this one. It's essentially, we used way slower technology that in whole was actually way faster. And we could instead focus on trying to make some parts of the process that were slow that we could very easily put tech into way better. So we could build on this existing process that actually worked, that encapsulated everything that the real experts, not me, um, actually knew what was going on, and encapsulate all of that and build a system, build a, a technology product that works on top of a working system. So paper, the, the appropriate technical solution. Um, there's a really cool side effect to that, which is because we had this system that already worked and we just put a little bit of technology in the places where we could, we had the fallbacks built in. So it's like, if the technology fails here, then we still know how to process that data because we do it the way that we used to do it. Um, talk a little bit about that at uh, Crate and Barrel. I was there for a really long time and mostly worked on this point of sale. Um, that joke kills with commerce developers, by the way. <laughs> yes. Um, commerce is a system that is old as dirt. Everybody knows how to do that. Um, everybody knows how to exchange money for goods. Um, so we took that process that everybody knows, and we layered some tech on it in the right places. And what we got with that is a system where if we have a power outage or an internet outage or whatever it might be, we had the fallbacks already in place. We can fall back to the same process, just with simpler tech. So all of these things, floor limits, Paper, again, paper registers, other things that are, you know, have been around for 50, hundreds, millions of years, whatever it is, since people have been doing commerce, which is a very, very long time. Um, so one more quick example. Uh, threadless. Uh, there's a, a theme coming up here. We did, uh, we did a bunch of warehouse management. I mentioned that. We did often tens of thousands, plus or minus several orders of magnitude, orders a day. Um, that's a lot of shirts that you have to do. And if you're, if you're shipping them out yourself, you actually have to handle your warehouse in a real way. Um, 
Again, here's that theme again where I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, so we started with no tech. And we said, okay, what's the process? What's the process of doing this? And we modeled it with paper. Okay, this is the, the subtitle of this talk is paper's awesome. Um, <laughs> so paper is really easy to scale, way easier than computers and cheaper too. Um, but we modeled this process out and then we sort of graduated up to Google Docs because that was also really easy. And then we built tech on top of that. So again, just using that, like focusing on the actual problem and, and defining what that process is and putting technology in the right places on that. So in the end, in order to help people be more effective, it's not necessarily about using the most advanced technology, but instead about using that technology to help build on top of solutions that already work and make them work better. And essentially, it's about using a shovel when you need a shovel, even if you have an excavator. Thanks.